Hello, I'm Fenland Fisherman and welcome to another fishing video. if we can get one out using a variety of baits and things I'll take you through that later um, both using very simple tactic pipe fishing but you know if we carry on struggling I think um, we'll start experimenting a bit more but so far simple pipe tackle just fishing in the mud and of course I am I am fishing a different swimming pool you saw me set up in initially and um, I've had to move because of the wind but I'm still fishing in the spot with the young swim. I've just sat the swim down so I've got back to the wind. So you can see the other spot that I'm fishing, so I'm just fishing in that for you. But I guess I'm going to see how it goes and hopefully we'll get one. Well, good morning. We're, um, as George has probably told you, we're on a little commercial today after a supposedly big commercial perch. And we've been here, well, it's actually lunchtime now. Um, I've been having a snooze. Uh, I'm in the sun. The weather the weather has changed dramatically. It's beautiful now. It's very warm. Well, warm for the time of year, bearing in mind we are in February. Uh, the wind's eased down a little bit and um, it's all looking good for a bite or two. But so far, so far George has had the only bite. But with the weather changing as it is and it's definitely getting warmer and this is actually only a very shallow lake, three to four foot deep. Hopefully the influence of the sun We'll have a little bit of hold and something will move and you know, maybe we'll get up a bite as it gets later towards evening. Perch are known for having this magic hour where they feed with gay abandon, usually the last hour of light. Um, and I've sat many a winter's day all day long and caught nothing, only to get a load of bites just before the end. So we're far from without hope yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is just quickly talk you through the rig I'm using or the tackle and everything. Um, just a basic fixed ball reel, that's a Shimano Stradic, loaded with six pound line. Um, the rods, a one pound Avon rod, one pound test curve. But, yeah, it is one pound test curve. Um, straight through Avon, very, very simple. Um, you can use a little bit heavier than that, it really doesn't matter. I wouldn't really go much heavier than a pound and a quarter, but you know, use whatever you've got. Even a float rod's good for perch, you know, you're not talking about something that's going to be massive anyway. Um, to that, I've got a chubber style flow. Now, obviously, we're fishing still waters today, but this rig is a crossover rig I use for the rivers as well. Um, having the extra buoyancy as well means that you can use it for live baits as well as for worms as we're using today. We are actually allowed to use live baits on this on this venue, and may well do this afternoon if something comes along with the worms. But um, 
the only problem is we have got a catcher, but I haven't seen any signs of the little fish either yet. So, you know, we're uh, soldiering on with the worms to start with. But they're very, very, very good for perch. Like I say, the extra buoyancy means you can use them in running water, you can use them in live bait. And what I do crucially, these are, I believe, five swan um, chubbers, yeah, no, well, actually, four and a half, so nine AAA. So, but what I do is I always undershot them. Um, with, a, with a four swan, I've never put more than three on there. So you've always got this neck part sticking out. It'll sit cocked at best like that. And sometimes I'll just leave it laying flat on the top because that means then you've got that bit, bit, bit more buoyancy, like I say, to A, ride the current, or B, keep your live bait from continuously pulling your float under because otherwise you're just gonna keep striking then and all you're going to end up doing is killing the live bait quicker. Now that runs down to a free ray running ledger link. That's got a large eye swivel on the top. Um, there's actually a helicopter one from Fox made for helicopter rigs for cart kits. And, and all I've done is to the end, the quick change end there, I've put a loop of line covered it with their quick change sleeve covers and on that loop of line I've, as I've tied you can see I've got one swan shot and two AA normally I'd have just swan shot but I'd, I'd run out of them so that slides along the line so it basically means the float is effectively a float ledger rig um, then it's a buffer bead to a swivel to a short hook length about six to eight inches or I don't know I think I'd be quite happy if I had six inches that long, to be fair. That's probably a bit longer than that, probably about eight or nine inches. Um, and then, of course, the ubiquitous big old lobworm, which few perch, in fact, few fish that swim can resist. Um, and it's, it's, like I say, it's a very simple rig. You can have it fished dead to depth, as we're doing today, and have it on the bottom float ledged. Or if you want to just trot one down, say you were river fishing, um, you can basically slide the float down and it will still work. Um, it's the rig I use all the time for perch and it's, it's caught me some big ones in the past. And that's basically all we're doing today really. It's it's very very simple. You can make fishing far far too complicated and perch are simple fish. You know they're not they're not hard to catch if you can find them um, and if they're feeding and you know, adding loads of wonder rigs to it isn't going to make any difference to it. Just keep things nice and simple, nice and uncomplicated. So the, the fewer twists and tricks you put into it, the fewer things there are to go wrong. And like I say, this is tried and trusted. I've mean, been using this rig for ages. <coughs> and uh, caught lots of perch on it. As regards to my swim, well, we're basically fishing along the edge, along the margins. Most of what we've got here is rushes and perch love rushes and obviously what the big thing that I've got in this swim is this floating what used to be a fish cage I believe. Um, it's long since gone past its best, um, a bit like my good self and uh, it's just about had it now but if you could write a perch swim this would be the one because it's got the only feature in the lake in it. Perch love cover over their heads. They love stuff, underwater structures to get in and out, um, to ambush their prey, um, or just to feel safe themselves. Admittedly, there's nothing else in here really that could eat them other than cormorants. Um, so, you know, that's it's pretty much a perfect perch swim. The only thing that's missing at the moment is the perch, and they obviously haven't read Mr. Crabtree. Mr. Crabtree would have picked this any time, um, but there we go. That is the old Mr. Crabtree anyway, not the new rod licking Mr. Crabtree of the John Bailey era, um, the, the older one. But we will soldier on, we'll persevere, and like I say, I'm quite expect fully expecting that we ain't going to get much until the evening, and then come the evening we'll probably have a brief flurry of activity, put a whamming great perch in the net, and you'll be happy. Well, some really slow fishing on the other swim. Um, over the last three hours we've been here, I've only had one bite. Mark said nothing. So I just baited up the spot. This little pool behind the lake we're fishing. The lake we're fishing is meant to be a really murky lake. 
at the moment is crystal clear. This pool is nice and murky. I'm hoping that it's the clarity of the water that's putting these perch off. As, as you'll know, they prefer to feed in the conditions. So I've baited up a spot in this little pool in a lovely little corner, a little fishy little pool. I don't mind it, gonna come down and stalk a few fish out, no matter what species they need. Right, creep up to the water. Right, I went for a bit of change of tactics now. Um, we've not got the perch in the edge which we normally do. So what I decided to do was change and look for the chub. Now what I've set up is a twitching rig. Now all it is, is a quiver tip rod, one pound Tesco quiver tip rod. Again, fixed ball loaded with six pound line. Nothing too special there. It's only at this end where it's even slightly special. Right, blatant plug time here. This is a Nash lead and I am sponsored by Nash. Um, but the main reason I use these is not, it's not because I get them for free, although that helps. Um, it's because they're big eye swivels. All Nash leads are fitted with big eye swivels, which means that for running leads, they're ideal. Now, you want a little flat lead because that will create a lot more disturbance when you drag it along the bottom. And it pu pushes up a little cloud of silt behind it. And the fish see this worm following on and think that the worm's cooked up the sill and they go for the worm. Um, again, don't want it too heavy, that's like I say an ounce, ounce and a quarter, stop by a buffer bead to a swivel and then on there I've got a length of four pounds. Now this is red line which George is absolutely kicking me about because he hates red line um, and says it's all a myth. I'm neither one way or the other although I do tend to swerve towards the way George is as well but it was the only four pound line I had and at the end of the day, it's worked. You know, as they say, show us your albums. Um, this is size six hook, nothing special there. Um, and on what I had on it was a big lobworm. Now what you do is you cast out to the feature that you're gonna to fish to to start with, which here is the island, it's a natural halfway point. Cast to the island, twitch it back. And when I say twitch it, all you do is you put your rod in the, in the rest and then you just wind it a couple of turns along the bottom so it's dragging along the bottom now obviously you can only do this where, the, where it's pretty snag free um, and here it is most commercial fisheries that you find will be um, and the idea was to search out the perch however the best laid plans of mice and men as they say have gone slightly awry but in a very nice and quite spectacular way and we're now about to show you exactly what it is that I've caught Right, well, we were supposed to be perch fishing, but in true Barrett and Day style, we go chub fishing a few weeks ago, can't get anything other than a tiny one. Now we go perch fishing today and get a stonking great chub. It's exactly five pounds on the nose. If it was a river fish and had some weight, some actual depth to it, it'd be a lot, lot bigger. It's a beautiful fish, pristine. I'm ever so pleased with that. Fought like crazy as well. What more could you ask for? Well, as you can see, I've moved back now to the, um, to the main lake in which we started. Um, two reasons, really. Um, well, the main reason being Mark had a child, I had to run up there as quick as I could to film it. And um, the second being just because it's been, you know, very, very slow back there. And it's getting into even now, so I thought I might as well come back up and give it the last few hours after the perch. But I think even if I don't catch anything, it's been nice to get out on a day where I haven't been either battered by wind or trying to fish through the snow. <laughs> it's a lovely change and yeah, like I said, it's just nice to get out. smaller than the first one this one's 412 but that's a lovely brace on a very cool and calm day in February and um, shows what you can do with commercial chub when you set your mind to it really pleased with that the lights just go we've probably only got 
15, 20 minutes left. But again, look how long that is. Chub the length of my arm. But very broad across the back. That's where they get their weight from here. Lovely fish. And I'm going to slip that one back because we've only got about a few minutes left. And I want to see if I can get another one. We've just arrived at the venue. Rods are out and out. It's a beautiful misty morning, although a little bit cold. But we're here for the whole day. So let's see if we can get a few perch. Well, we're in again, and the patented chub method has worked a treat because we've hooked another one. It's another good chub. Doing as all chub do, trying to get into the snags. But there we go, Twitch Run does it again! Hee <laughs> hee! Am I just the daddy or what? Well, we're back again, and uh, we've had a similar result because the, the chub king here has managed to land another one. And. Uh, not as big as those two that I had the last time here. This one's probably about three and a half pounds, I should think. But um, fighting fit gave me a great bite. Wrapped the rod right the way around again. And again, on that devastating twitch lobworm rig that I showed you. So, certainly shows it works. But, you are not the perch we're looking for. We're actually looking for a perch. But, um, while I'm catching chub like this, I'm not that bothered. I don't mind catching these all day long. Especially the way these ones fight, they go for the reeds, they go for the snags. You may not be running water, but you're no more stupid. So we're going to get her back now. Oh god, a carp. Definitely a carp. Chris and my new rod, my new Philippin. Don't feel like it. it's definitely not perch what we're after. It's a tench. Well, that's my first fish of the day, a personal best, a tench. Um, caught on my new uh, centre pin, my new rod. Not what we're here for, uh, we're here for the perch, but fish, anyway. I'm loving it. Well, you join us now, it's about halfway through our session, it's just around about lunchtime. And as you can see, the weather certainly took a change for the better. We've got some glorious spring sunshine out now, um, which is causing us to cast aside layers. It's very, very nice. Sadly, the fishing hasn't picked up since the first thing this morning. And, you know, I had that chub obviously first off and we saw Mike have the tench not so long afterwards. Um, but to be honest with you, since then I haven't had a bite. Um, George has just managed the one bite. Um, and Mike's not really managed anything else. So it's, it's actually gone very, very slow. Whether that's because the fish have come up in the water um, with, the, with the warming weather. Um, I've struggled to believe that because the, although it is really, really nice with the sun out, um, sun has actually only really been out in drips and drabs and... Uh, We've just got a nice little break at the moment while we're filming, which has been a bit longer, but um, I shall persevere with the twitching for a little while longer. I've got a float out now a bit further for a more static presentation. Um, again, with the lobworm on to see if we can't get one of these perch to, to bite, but they are proving very, very elusive. Um, George has just been round the pit and not done any good. Um, we've got another friend, Steve, fishing at the far end of the lake. And he's not doing any good, getting lots of line bites and he's got carp moving in front of him, but no perches yet. So, unfortunately, the perch are still proving elusive, but we shall persevere. We've got plenty more time yet. The, the days are now starting to slowly drift out and it's probably not dark now until about half past six. So, with a bit of luck, we still may pick something up yet. Let's hope so. Well, this is what we've come for. Nice perch. The other ones haven't caught nothing like this yet. I don't think they're going to because I'm the fishing god. <laughs> well, we're on the bank now at session two. And I'd like to be the first to say it's terrible, terrible weather. It's really windy, freezing cut off about four degrees. Colder than it was last time. And um, 
I'm under the Brody now. Different swim plots in the swim as well. Don't particularly want to carry on blanking, that's for sure. But, um, rods are out now. Got one rod, ledger. Starting off with a maggot feeder. Well, on the multi feeder rig. What I mean by that is I'm just switching between feeders. I'll show that rig in a bit. It's just a simple running running rig with a quick chain swivel on it. So I've got that out currently on a ground bait feeder, which I've just got literally a mixture of brown crumb and um, red maggots, and that's the only thing to put on the little fish, just the perch follow him. That's the idea anyway. Left hand rods just on the um, lob worm and the standard, you know, flake fish presentation. What I've got with that is just a bulk shot of about three AA shots on the bottom. It's a one SSG um, loaf of float. I've got a bulk shot of three AA on the bottom, over depth up to the float. It's about Eight foot over, you know, eight foot, so a foot over depth. So yeah, they're the tactics for today. I'm gonna keep it simple. I mean, last time I kept it simple, didn't catch anything. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. But it's very cold today, and that's been quite warm recently, about eight degrees. So whether or not it's to put them off, I don't know. But you know, it's not just perching; it's, 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 there's other fish as well. Although certainly the carp and things are going to be slow coming on the feed because it's still winter. Or oh, spring winter time. I think today is actually the first day of spring. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see, won't we? But um all the other fish are certainly gonna be slow coming on the feed, so if anything does feed it's gonna be a while I think. But we'll sit it out. I'm not quite frozen to death yet. I've got an umbrella over me, so it's alright. But I'm joined here today yet again by Mr. Mark and by our good mate Mike. So hopefully at least one of us is gonna pull out something. Right now, I've got a nice warm, warm cup of tea. So let's enjoy that and can't catch anything. Try and enjoy the scenery. Well, day three, but I'm into something first cast again. Only this time, I'm different tactics on the maggot feed. Not. I did think to start with this one will be a perch. It's jagged around like one, but it's just starting to hold on a little bit too long now. Feeder tactics. Work the chain. That's oh, how that's what doing it around a lot. It's a male tench. Right. Slip the hook out of her. In. Even. Three and a half pounds, I should think. But you're a bit unseasonal, my friend. You're a little bit uh, like doing the tent program in the spring during the summer. But you'll do now. And like I say, change the feeder over now to a maggot feeder. There's a fair bit of ground bait down there now, so that's going to go solely on loose seed. I haven't had any definite bites, a few beeps, but I could easily be wind catching the line. It was hard to tell, but I'm not going to say I've had any definite bites yet, just to be sure. 
Mark's already had a pinch. He seems to be a specialist at catching first or at least second cast here, so well done to him. But like I said, I'm going to change this over now and see if that brings a change of fortune. Probably a good time to take the rig to be fair. So I'm flip on the maggot feeder. There we go. Just get that bit over there. we go. Right. So the rig, very, very simple. Five pound hydroflow main line. Um, that that one is running down to a, a running feeder, which I've got on a quick change swivel, and and a normal swivel just above it, which has a large run ring on it. Well, a larger run ring, just to minimise, so minimise resistance, which can be key when perch fishing. So I've got a buffer bee just pushed over a little target swivel, both from the new garden target range, which is perfect for you know perch fishing and. Fishing for specimen fish, which is you know what I tend to like to do. Although <laughs> with my catch record at the moment, you wouldn't know it. Anyway, I've then got that running down to some three pound gardener, um, some three. Anyway, I've then got that running down to some three pound gardener fluorocarbon again in the target range. Then just topped off with a size 14 barbed hook and three red maggots. Going to fill the feeder now up with some maggots. Just using red today. I prefer red, especially when perch fishing. It probably doesn't, I, I, I should probably number it to get full bit colours, but I tend to think red seems to work better. Whether it does or not, I don't know. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, so I'm just going to cast this out. First, we get out of the umbrella. Well, first fish of the day, and it's hardly what we came here for, or what I wanted. It's a ruddy bream, but a fish is a fish. First fish of 2012, coarse fish at least. Got a fair bit of weight behind it, I'd say it's probably about four pounds actually. It's a very heavy set fish. Nice enough fish, I want to get it back. I don't particularly want to smell like bream. And it's bloody snowing. Oh, why bream, why? Oh well, come on perch, next fish, eh? Well, <laughs> I've had my fish at last. Three sessions down there, finally got one. Whatever it was, unfortunately, a bream. <laughs> Which is probably the last fish I'd want to catch while I was perch, perch fishing. Bream fishing, yes, wouldn't mind catching one obviously, but perch fishing, no. Nah. But it's saving for, from a plank, so I'm happy about that. But I would say it's very, very cold. 